and we have Ratigan on the scene, right? The man who penned the letter, right? So let us um, read it out, and then we have we, have, we ask um, Ratigan, right, to break it down for us. His Majesty the King, Buckingham Palace, London, United Kingdom, right? And you see the address there, October 17, 2024. May it please your majesty. And I want to say, Ratty, big up for the penmanship. I really love it. I write to you concerning the reprehensible conduct of a, of a, a privy councillor and respectfully request that this individual be struck off the list by your majesty's hand. Right then and there, tell, um, just highlight definitely the objective of this letter. The privy council in question is the most honorable Andrew Michael Owens. Prime Minister of Jamaica, hearing after referred to as PM, Prime Minister, who was appointed to the Privy Council on May 26, 2021. As background, Jamaica's anti-corruption agency, the Integrity Commission, hearing after referred to as the Commission, was legislatively established in 2017 under the Prime Minister's administration. Among its responsibilities are the review of annual statutory declarations submitted by the public official, the investigation of alleged acts of corruption and the prosecution of corrupt public officials. In February 2023, the commission submitted an investigative report for tabling in Jamaica Parliament. The report was also provided to the corruption prosecutor for a review and consideration regarding the prosecution of the prime minister for his undue influence in the awarding of contracts to a company owned and operated by individuals he was familiar with, including an individual with whom he had an extensive business relationship. And it note there, please see the attached commission's investigative report dated October 2022. In September 24, the commission submitted an investigative report for tabling in the Jamaica parliament. This report was far more serious and damning than the 2023 report. It contained shocking information, including the revelation that the Prime Minister had 28 bank accounts, including a joint account with a member of his constituency that he claimed ignorance about when he questioned by the Commission. Please see the attached Commission investigative report dated August 2024. While the Commission's 2024 investigative report did not indicate whether the Prime Minister had any existing foreign investment and or accounts, his financial activity in the Caribbean and relationship with individuals in the financial industry lent credence to the distinct possibility of unreported overseas accounts or and investments. Notably, the Commission's 2024 investigative report recommended the following actions. Bulletin point number one, the prosecution of the Prime Minister for knowingly providing false information in one of his statutory declarations filed with the Commission. Bulletin point number two, the Financial Investigative Division should investigate the Prime Minister for possible breach of illicit enrichment clause of the Jamaican Corruption Prevention Act, Section 14, Subsection 5, bulletin point number 3, the Tax Administration of Jamaica should investigate the companies own solely, jointly, or affiliated with the Prime Minister for possible tax violations because they paid no tax despite having substantial income for the applicable period. Bulletin point number 5, the Ethics Committee of the Parliament should determine the appropriateness of the Prime Minister's appointment of his business partner in the construction industry to two public boards, Housing Agency of Jamaica and Urban Development Corruption. That fall within the Prime Minister's executive portfolio as the Minister of Economic Growth and Job Creation, right, as it relates to follow bullet, bulletin point number six, the Parliament should examine and determine whether there are adequate safeguards to effectively address conflict of interest and insider trading issues facing parliamentarians and the Financial Service Commission 
should examine the questionable financial um, arrangement where the Prime Minister received a secured loan in the amount of 50 million um, from a financial institution, ostensibly with collater collateralized that the commission determined he did not own at that time the loan was dispersed. I want to get to this bulletin point. Finish, uh, let me read, read it over. Financial Service Commission should examine the question of the financial arrangement where the Prime Minister received a secured loan. I think Ratti might be around to say it, unsecured loan because it, it, it worked. Well, you will discuss that um, later when I give you okay. the opportunity to, um, to do so. Okay. In the amount of 50 million from a financial institution ostensibly with collateral that the commission determined he did not own at the time, right? The loan was disbursed. And that in essence now really determine, they really um, conclude that it is um, an unsecured loan based on what Rutigan said in the last um, statement there. The commission's 2024 investigative report also indicated that bulletin point again. The, the prime minister provided information that was inconsistent with the evidence obtained during the investigation. The Prime Minister acquired um, and personally benefited from an asset purchase with commingled funds from his personal account and the account of a charitable organization, right in bracket here, Positive Jamaica Foundation, where he was a, a um, director. The Prime Minister refused to provide critical information relative to the Commission's illicit enrichment investigation and thereby hinder the investigators in completing their investigative mandate. The Prime Minister provides unsatisfactory explanation regarding the income generating capacity of several companies he was affiliated with. From 2020 to 2023, the three companies affiliated with the Prime Minister, right, namely Imperium, um, Estate Bridge Holdings, and Positive Media, had inter-network deposit of 473 Point one million and withdrawals of four hundred and twenty-seven point one million dollars. These deposits and withdrawals are extremely staggering, especially when taken in light of the following: several years before becoming prime minister, the prime minister was publicly identified as being delinquent on a student loan and payment. That is a very important notification. There, there is no reporting that the prime minister received a um, bequest or a gift that could um satisfactorily so what um that would mean because of like a will or anything will. Yeah. there's no reporting that the prime minister received a will or a gift that could satisfactorily explain his sudden and enhanced financial position bulletin um these bulletin points are very much important in terms of how ratty um pendis um, um situation there is no reporting or evidence that the prime minister ever gambled and one prize, small or sizable prize. And, and that's why we said, um, Ratigan, based on your letter, right, that the Prime Minister is definitely in a conundrum. Very serious, very serious um, time for the Prime Minister. The Prime Minister working life has been primarily as a career politician, that we need to know that, who receive and continues to receive a salary that does not appear to be commensurate with his economic station, right? In response to the Commission's damning 2024 investigative report, the Prime Minister quickly exercised his rights to seek legal review. Please see the attached Prime Minister affidavit in support of notice of application for court orders and the notice of application for the court orders for permission to apply for judicial review. Noteworthy is that the Chairman of the Commission recently testified in the Jamaican Parliament and asserted that the contents of the Commission's 2024 investigative report are indeed back to what now since um, Ratigan is here in person, let us to Brother Ratigan. First, I want to say, Ratigan, the penmanship is excellent, sir. And I think you have covered all the necessary details are to be covered right, as it relates to the Integrity Commission investigation and the way you have summarized them. Wonderful job done, I must say. Rati, please, um, take us through. Take away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yes, you want to. You shall read the last paragraph, the very last paragraph. Oh, I missed out something. Uh, okay, yeah, sorry about the last paragraph. Yeah. Okay. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Not the, the, right, this is the very last one. Yes. Okay. So let me read the very last paragraph. In light of the aforementioned, the Prime Minister's continued presence on the Privy Council is untenable and a serious embarrassment to your majesty. The island paradise of Jamaica and has caused a deep stain on the Privy Council. Wow. By his actions, inactions, and imputed motive, the Prime Minister has proven himself unworthy of continuing as a Privy Councillor and must now suffer the ignominy nominee of removal forthwith by Your Majesty's own hand. Well done. Take that away. Let us turn to Brother Ratigan. All right. Yes, Brother Ratigan, you're on the floor. <laughs> the, re the reason why this is secure loan is because, and I should put secure in in, in parentheses. I mean, sorry, in quotation. Exactly. Because what happened is that they they pretended as if it was a secure loan. Sure. Because, yes. Yeah, because Barita said, well, yeah, he gave, put up collateral. And then he said he put up collateral. And when they checked, they said that there was no collateral. So yes. what happened is that they intended to have a secure loan, right? Yes. By, by their statements, but by their deeds, it was an unsecured loan. Unsecured. Because what happened is that if he decided that he wasn't going to pay that loan before putting up every, the day after he got that money, if he decided, I'm not paying this loan back, there's nothing really they could do to him. They'd have to sue him. Yes. But they couldn't go on, go after his property or anything like that because it's an unsecured loan. Unsecured. So that's why, so that's why the Integrity Commission said they intended to execute a, a secured loan. But in its effect, it was an unsecured loan because at least for a certain point in time, because the things that he said he put up for collateral, those things weren't there. And guess what? There's one thing that he mentioned that they found out later on because they said that he had, Barita initially said that he, he put some shares up. And then when they went to the prime minister, he said, yeah, uh, uh, the shares, he, he didn't talk about the shares that Barita talked about. He talked about Barita's shares. And he said, I, I I have some shares from Barita and I you know these are I use them as collateral. So they went to Barita and they said, How about these shares? Barita said, Well, you never buy them from us, and buy them on the open market. So you have to go talk to the stock exchange. Mm -hmm. They went to the stock exchange and I said, How much you pay for them shares and how many shares? Stock exchange said, We don't know how much you pay for them. We just know the number of shares. That's it. And so what happened now? The question was, well, wait a minute, where you get the money from for buy these shares? And then they traced it to two bank accounts. One of the bank accounts was the one that Norman Brown deposited the money in through the ATM machine. Hmm. And they said, well, wait a minute, hold on. You and this man are partners. He works for you in your ministry. Why must you go around and deposit millions of dollars in an ATM machine? Why cash? Why can't you just come to you and give a check or whatever? Him starts saying, oh, the money was for rent from a Mona property and the money was also for some advance payment for some, it's foolishness, it's foolishness. So they, they, I believe, this. believe me, this prime minister is in serious trouble because yes. you know what I'm saying now? When you tell the truth, you don't have to remember what you say. Yes. When you tell a lie, it just get bigger and bigger because you have to tell more lies to cover up that lie and then more lies and more lies. And I don't think the prime minister was fully forthcoming. And they said it, they said that, they, that's why they turned it over to Fed because they said, he has refused to give us expense information so that we can determine whether or not he's guilty of illicit enrichment and we can make a recommendation for him to be prosecuted. And he didn't do it. So the thing about this mistake is this. I'm not doing this for fame. I'm not doing this for position. I'm not doing this for money. In fact, I don't get paid. I yeah. enjoy doing it. I enjoy exactly. doing it on behalf of my people. And what I'm hopeful is that I can inspire one, two, three, however many people to pick up a pen or get behind a computer and say, I go, I'm going to do it. Now, I must give credit to a gentleman in England because every time I say, I'm going to do something and I talk to him, him do it right away. Him do it and him send it to me and say, hey, this is what I'm sending. And sometimes before I can even give him my assessment of the thing, him send it off already. So like I would call him and say, hey, you know, take out this paragraph, whatever. And say, he start laughing and say, boy, too late. It's gone. He said, me now. So 
I'm just hoping that I can inspire people because here's what happened. And, and, I, and, and this is not just for this government, it's for any government. We have to get government uh, to realize that they're servants of the people. Yes. And that they, they're there to serve and they're they're not they're not there to for 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 you know personal riches or anything like that. They're there to make sure that services are provided to the people and services are not provided because when you have so much money, Jamaica's are wash with money, you know. Jamaica's are wash with um with donor funds and loans and grants and all of this stuff. And then when you say, then why is it that people so poor in Jamaica? Why is it that people still don't have running water, don't have roads, don't have electricity, don't have schools, you know, with, with proper, with proper re, proper, properly resourced, don't have police stations, properly yes. resourced. When, when they talk about just the basics, and you say, but Jamaica is not a poor country because the amount of money that's from Jamaica. But you know what? A lot of these politicians, they're crooks. They're in it for themselves. Mm -hmm. And they've stolen and they continue to steal. And Mystic, thank God for a program like this and others yes, that sir. we can highlight it. Because the stealing last that didn't you know, just start, no, that one for decades. But what happened now is that the light is being shined on oh, them yeah. right now. We're shining the light on them now. And so they don't like that. By the way, we get threats this week. We get threats. People are telling me, take down your letter or what got to you. We just say, fine, what happened to me make it happen? <laughs> yeah, because it not stop me. I mean, yeah. foolishness when it's me. It not stop me. You know, me I'll do what me have to do. And, yeah. and, and me have to do what me have to do to protect myself as well. So I mean, no, if you do that. So me all right, you know. Right. But 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 we have to get, we're at, today on Jeffrey Tavares, bro, somebody said the same thing. They said that the Jamaican people must get involved because they're too complacent. Mm -hmm. Look, the media... The me you know you notice that the letter hasn't been published in the media and it's been sent. Yes, it's been sent to the media. And them just said, Well, I know I'm not bother with it. You know, one person said to me, I won't call any name. Him said to me, When you get a response from the king, you can't make me know. And I said, But me not ask for a response from the king. Me not just notify the king what I want. Me not ask if we say for real letter, me not ask him to say respond to me because that would be inappropriate to tell the king say. Hey, take care of this and then report to me what's going on. No, you just say, King, here are the facts. We are asking to take care of this matter. And, and that's it. You know. Yeah. So, but the media, the media, the media, timid, weak, spineless, um, civil society, same thing. No, there are exceptions. I must say that. Can't be them with a broad brush. There are exceptions. There are people in civil society who put their neck on the chopping block, likewise with journalists. But in the main, in the main, they, they, they're not doing what they're supposed to do. And I'm just hoping that someday something will happen that will just cause them to rise. And to the Jeffrey program, a man said, a man has a question, said, oh, it was a lady, lady. She said, she said, what if the, if, she said, I know he's a minister of defense, but what about if the JDF just decides that they don't want to take over the court? We said, no, ma'am, no, that's military coup. We don't want that. We don't want a military coup. <laughs> No, 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 no. <laughs> no, Rati. All right. Um, so, Rati, um, thank you for that. Um, Maria, before I move, because we are now going to get into the investigation, and I know that, you know, a lot of people are anticipating the investigation um, to start. But before we go into yeah, that... But, but, um, yeah, you know, one second there. Something I want to say, I'm listening to Ratigan and, you know, and you, as you read the letter, and I'm thinking, you know, they like to say that the Jamaican parliamentary system is modeled after the West, is the Westminster model, but it's not fully applicable because it was really following the Westminster um, model, Andrew would not still be there as prime minister. And the seven persons who are on the investigation for illicit enrichment they would have been named by now and kicked out so it is only westminster model in name only but not in applicability you know and the, the to the person who said you know the person in the media who said um oh when they get a response let me know he's missing the point because a letter that that sent to the king it goes it passes through many many hands true and so you know, 
not only will the king hear about it, members of the House of Commons are going to hear about it. So when Andrew goes into those spaces, yes. he gets the side eye. So, you know, they are missing the point, you know. You can't yeah. throw the baby out of the bath water. Exactly. You know, some of you make an excellent point, and I, 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 I was remiss in not mentioning it. The letter was not only sent to the king. I, I need to make that clear. The letter was sent to 20 of the most influential members of the Privy Council, including the Archbishop of Canterbury wow. and the Prime Minister of the UK. Yeah, it was sent to them. So it wasn't just sent to the king only. It was sent to 20 of the most influential members of the Privy Council. And this week, we're going to send it to 20 more members and we're going to keep sending it till we get to all of them. And then we're going to send it to the Jamaican Parliament as if they don't have it already. And we're going to send it to my good friend, the speak, the, 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 the president of the Senate, uh, Mr. T T Tavares. Finn. So we're going, to send it, we're going to send it all over the place because this thing needs to... And we're going to send it to, um, we're going to send it to foreign media as well because we need, to, we need the prime minister to be treated as the pariah that he is. If yes. people would just take off the blinders, just take off the blinders and put their partisanship aside and just look at it honestly and objectively and just say to themselves, what my prime minister are doing with 28 bank accounts? Why? What, what is he doing with 28 bank accounts? What is he doing running businesses and at the same time being prime minister? What, why is he money running here, money running there? How oh, oh, find time to do all them transactions? Remember the remember you know, the the, the uh, forensic guy you know, said it's thousands of transactions done you know, in a short period of time. Where how a prime minister find time for do that? And then remember now what he said, you know, him said, you know why the country now run good is because we don't pay well. well. No, no, that Mr. Prime Minister, because you're busy at do this. Mm -hmm. you're busy at do this, that's why the country now runs so and 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 so we just have to. There has to be an outcry. We have to do something. And like I said, thank God for you and Anne Marie and Maria, you know, because you are shed light on the things that should be that that should, should be exposed, you know. I mean, a little entertainment is good. Some programs don't have entertainment, they have this and that. But this is a serious program where you just yeah. focus on the on the issues. And let me tell you, me not say me said one of the reasons why I love that program, yeah? in my wife did them homework. Thank they you. don't come and just, they don't read the headlines and come and talk about the headlines. Mm -hmm. They go down the headlines, you know, and yes. that's why yeah, I will never be tired, my brother. You have to tell me, say, no, come back on your program. I'm going to tell you that. Like well, that. You have a day every Tuesday night. You have a day. What I'm like is trying to do with the like, rest again. What I'm like is trying to do with the for years. <laughs> we did for years. <laughs> but you know something, Ratagan? You said he goes beyond the headlines. And I'm going to say, Reason with Rattigan covers all angles. All right. <laughs> so I'm saying, yeah, and, 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 yeah and, and here's the thing. Because, yeah. you know, you see the letter getting to out to all these people. It's going to get into the hands of the people that we, more, we are most interested in having. Look at it. Those yeah. who donor funds. Because yes. when you have countries making donations to the Jamaican government, yes for various programs that benefit inner city youth, young people, and you see crime is still out of control. There are no programs that, benefiting, that benefit the young people. Um, Fantastic Five just take my text message, shade. <laughs> you know, yeah. Um, and not, not, you don't see the programs that benefit the young people. 24,000 students are not proficient in math and English. Uh, I think it was five or six thousand did not get at least one subject in the latest Scripting. formerly CXC, GC, whatever, right? Yeah. That you know, you combine that it's thirty thousand. I'm quite sure some of the numbers overlap, but the gist of it is that thousands are not proficient in math, English, and have no way of advancing academically or so. Where's the skills training? Where's the vocational training? And these are this is a country that gets millions of dollars, whether it's from the USAID, from the Vice President of the United States, from the, um, the British government, from European Union, from the Japan government, all over the place, they are getting a lot of donor funds, monies that they do not have to pay back. Now, you add to that the loans that they get that they, in fact, have to pay back. 
and they're not even paying back the loans. They're paying on the interest on the loans. Yes. So they haven't touched the loans as yet. You understand? So when they get these monies and you don't see anything tangible on the ground benefiting these young people, and all you can hear is the prime minister has 28 bank accounts and who has buildings going up here and who own plaza and who own gas station and all these things. You, yeah. it, you have to ask the question and you, these persons should now start looking into getting accountability from these people. Show us before we give you any more donations. Show us how you spent the monies that we gave you the last time. And when that starts happening, I think we'll see a sea change in the corruption. And when people say, oh, this no mean not so the thing set and the next one will come in. No, we have to start where we are to get to where we want to go. And if it's one person held accountable, if just one person is held accountable, that is what we are looking for. Just start with one. We're not looking for the, the entire parliament at one time. No, one person. And when we get that one person to be held accountable, then they understand that this is a, this is a seriousness. Like Ratigan like to say, this is not in mother diaspora. Exactly. This is a different ball game altogether. And people have to wake up because when you look at young people resorting to violence, you know why they resort to violence? Not only do they come from poor communities, they have no outlet. They're not making it academically and there's no skills training vocational training to meet the needs of the workforce the current workforce you never you you'll always need the carpenter and the plumber and the painter and the electrician you always need those people where are the, faci the, the facilities to to absorb those young people where are the community centers to train young people in coding that is where things are going to learn how to do ai to learn to how, how they have a, um, a music industry where the young people being trained to work in the music the entertainment industry you know filming all of that so this is why we have to put the pressure on the government and these this letter is relevant you don't have to get a response from the king for it to be effective mm -hmm. you understand who came to the fore 2018 but where was Nigel Clark before coming to the fore in 2018? Nigel Clark was a director in one of Andrew Olness company prior to venture into the politics. And so then what we are seeing that Nigel Clark is doing now is <clears throat> preserving the status quo of the corruption. Because remember, before Nigel Clark ventured into the politics, Nigel Clark was indeed a director in, a, in one of Andrew Warner's shell companies. So let us point out that categorically clear. We want to show, right, the, you know, um, the, the corruption, the, 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 the twining of the corruption. Trace the DNA, the DNA of SSL for me. Can you? Well, one of the biggest contributors to the financial um, meltdown was the Eagle Group. Yeah? SSL was formerly what we called Paul, Paul Chenyong and Company. That was the stockbroking arm um, of the Eagle Group. You with me? Yeah, talk, the talk man who me. used to run SSL, Mr. Cross Terry, he was the man who was running Paul Chandler and Company, the stock broken arm of the EV group. So that's where it came from. They went down with 14 billion and change for the tax bill. That that is in so the, the that is in the in the in the in the FinSAC the era. 40 billion FinSAC money that we are talking about. They to them amount was 14 million dollars. 14 million. Billion, billion, and and yeah. if we equate that today to today's money, that would be like fifty billion now. Yeah. Hallelujah! Yeah. Real money we're talking about because Real back in the day, the dollar yeah. was yeah. better valued. Yeah, man. So, so yeah, the man. DNA of SSL, I come from down there, sir. Yeah, man, from the Eagle Group, the bloodline. Yeah, man. No, I said to you earlier. There are people presently in the parliament that was bailed out by FinSAC. Isn't that so? I'll tell you, yeah, man. That's why you can't get the report. 
I wonder if any of them persons that they're on the PNP side who got bailed out from No, Finsack. not right now. But said nobody on the PNP side never get bailed out from Finsack. No, not right now. Yeah. Oh, not so, within the current PNP setup. So which side then they're on? I don't know. But people That's in the parliament... Report, ask, yourself, ask yourself why the report can't be published and why it get transcripts instead of the report. Are, are you confident, Ralston, that all the material unearthed by the inquiry has been uploaded to this archive? No, man. Then you're not going to say redact some of the information, man, and take out some of the information. Because we would have followed the team. At that time, I was the financial editor of the Sunday Herald. And we know of people who borrow money from Central National Bank and tell them to go to pay. <laughs> 30 million US dollars. Them the, the, 30 the million US dollars are not more money. The, the American born? Yeah, of course. Oh, well, an yeah. American born. Born 30, 30 million. billion. I don't know, know who was the accountant in the place when he said that. Well, and 30 million, yeah. right? 30 million US dollars. There might be enchanted guards in a US case, like Harry Nossa. No, man, in a, in a Ochi. Yeah, sent an Ochi. And, and, and I said, I said to you, Ralston, and that was the project that Port and Tor All right, the people, as I said, that we are going to be carefully and forensically present our evidence tonight. So we have heard what Ralston Hyman stated, right? But let us ask a question. Where is the evidence in terms of supporting what Ralston Hyman said? Now, what Mystic Sensation have done is to go to the source as it relates to court document to prove and support what Ralston Hyman just said and what I have been presenting long time. So then now we are going to prove now, as it relates to court document, to support what Ralston Ayman said as it relates to the DNA of SSL, right? Linking SSL, right, to the 1995 financial meltdown. And as it relates to what? $14 billion. Remember, the damage that it caused that we had lost 40% of our GDP. But let me present the evidence to you all. Share. Now, Ratigan, we are going to get to the first evidence. And then we are going to go to the panel before we move on because we are not going to leave no stone and turn. We are not going to be like Nigel Clark who decided that he's not going to leave any stone and turn and he didn't, he didn't lift up not even one of them. Now let us read, people. Miami court stayed freeze on Cheng Young assets published Tuesday, May 22nd, 2007. The Miami court in Florida has set aside its ruling for the freezing of the assets of former Eagle Group boss Dr. Paul Cheng Young and stock broker Hugh Traskery. People, what I want you to pay attention to is the link with Hugh Traskery and Paul Cheng Young. And now it is the very same Hugh Traskery, right, that showed up as it relates to SSL. So then, SSL is not you cross carry first rodeo. He has done this before. Now, Mr. Cross carry, chairman of Stocks and Security Limited, a new Kingston brokerage known previously as Paul Cheng Young and Associates, was ordered to disclose other assets he holds on Chen Young's behalf within 14 days. The ruling was made on April 9th. However, 
in a ruling dated May 17, the court dissolved its ruling because the Jamaican Supreme Court lifted the stay of execution of a judgment against Chen Yong five days before the case was heard in Florida. After eight years of litigation on May 4 last year, the Jamaican court handed down judgment in favor of Eagle Merchant Bank and Crown Eagle Life against their former CEO, Paul Chen Young. Both groups were failed entities that were rescued by regulation in the 1990s. Hence, if you want to call that FINSA. Chen Young was earlier ordered to declare all his assets and not to dispose of or deal with any of them without the court's approval. Right? So, okay. Now we have seen SSL branded problem institution by FSC. And one of the reasons why we are getting into that document is to show that from 2010, I want people to understand before, let me explain this. Now, 2010, right? Who was the prime minister in 2010? The prime minister was Bruce Gorey, 2010. SSL, right, came back, right, in the public space 2008. Also 2008, right, the, um, the Prime Minister was Bruce Golden. SSL came in 2008, people, I want you to listen to me. And within two years, they were flagged. I'm going to just give you some background before I get into the next document. Right? You, Cross Terry, brought back SSL from the grave, right, as it relates to Paul Chen Young and Associates, right, that helped to cause a major part of the 1995 financial meltdown in 1995. But waited so many years to reintroduce it in 2008. Now, when it was introduced in 2008, who joined it in 2008? People, let me talk to you and make you understand something. The conspiracy as it relates to the Prime Minister, as it relates to the Prime Minister, Adli Shah, and you, Cross Terry. Who brought back SSL from the grave as it relates to Paul Chen Young and Associates? And what they had done was to carefully change the name so that people may not have any memory as it relates to Paul Chen Young and Associates and so then change it as SSL. The question that I'm asking who gave SSL, the license to operate, knowing to the fact what you cross carry and involved with, knowing the history, but however, still give, still gave you cross carry a license to operate, knowing the history of Paul Chen Young, an associate that converted into SSL and SSL was given a license to operate. People, let us remember, in 2011, Andrew Holness was the Prime Minister of Jamaica. Andrew Holness was the Prime Minister. And so then what happened as it relates to Bruce Golden, who totally hit out against the situation as it relates to SSL, and remember that Bruce Golden said that 
when you give an entity a license to operate, you are telling the Jamaican people that the entity, they can trust that entity. So we know by Bruce Golden came out publicly and said it, then it wouldn't be Bruce Golden who had issued that license. I want to make that categorically clear. However, other Prime Minister Andrew Hoonis, right? Then, here you go, right? Now, let us move further as it relates to you now the history that Andrew Hoonis would have now aware of what SSL is. And however, the Prime Minister of all, the Prime Minister would have decided to join into SSL, knowing that SSL was a Ponzi scheme. Let me stop it at, as a Ponzi scheme because of the next document that we are going now to show you that the FSC, you understand, based on their audit, would have shown clearly that SSL is a Ponzi scheme. The question is why the Prime Minister, why the Prime Minister join SSL? That is the big question. Now, here it is, people. Let me read it out. SSL branded problem institution by FSC five years ago. Flagged. Here the important notification here. Flagged for culture of non-compliance and mismanagement. So what that means? Let us take it into context. If something flagged for culture of non-compliance, and mismanagement, it simply means repeated history, a consistent pattern, right, of non-compliance and mismanagement. That's what it means. Let us go further in the document. Captain Security Limited offices on Oak Road. The company was renamed. People, let me tell you, see here it is. The company was renamed from Paul Cheng Young and company in 2006. In 2006, Trans Security Limited SSL was flagged in 2017 by staff of the Financial Service Commission for a culture of non-compliance and mismanagement of client funds. A systemic concern that may alarm investors as the company now grapples with billion dollars of fraud. Let us get into the meat of the matter. The opinion is contained in an explosive eight-page report prepared by the FSC in February 2017, ahead of a meeting with SSL representatives who were trying to convince the regulators not to suspend its license now, people, based on this paragraph, knowing to the fact what SSL involved with, right? The FSC has the ability to close them down. Let us go to the next paragraph. A suspension of the company's dealer's license, even for a day, would inevitably lead to a total destruction of the company and destabilization of the financial sector. SSL reportedly noted in the document obtained by the Greener. It added that SSL has been a problem institution, especially concerning its financial position. People are listening. The FSC noted that for the five years and six months leading up to February 2017, the company had been operating under its directions and has remained a problem institution. People want to hear that? Jamaica want to hear this? For failing to file its annual report for the period up to June 30, 2016. Failing to file audited accounts within 90 days of the close of a financial year. 
and granting credit to related parties in violation of orders issued in 2013. People, let me go through it. The revelations are sure to raise serious questions about the FSC oversight and efforts it took to both inform and protect the public, including sports legend Ossian Bolt, from the questionable actions of the 50-year-old company. There are also questions in whether SSL had satisfied seven conditions imposed by the FSC for the company to avert suspension in 2017. So people, the FSC who was investigating them, gave them seven conditions, right? And should be follow and should be following up on these conditions to ensure that SSL stay, stay in part with regulation. Did they do so? No. Let us go into the next paragraph. Bolt 36 is among more than 20 clients who are facing the loss of millions of dollars in local and United States currencies arising from the alleged fraud that the Financial Investigation um, Division FID said has stretched back at least a decade during which questionable actions were taken against affected accounts, right? So based on FID investigation, realize that from a decade they have a culture right of these practices and neither hardly sure let us talk about it now people hardly sure right who would have gotten a report from fsc did not stop them why hardly sure did not stop them now we are talking about hardly sure now you know why hardly sure did not stop them now the Prime Minister would have his account in SSL knowing to the fact of all these inconsistencies. Remember now, people, that FSC would have, would have been reporting to the Minister of Finance. And the Minister of Finance would have been reporting to the Prime Minister. So then, hardly saw, you understand, would have had a complete understanding of the wrongdoing, right, or the malpractices, right, of SSL. However, Adli Shah, right, who had benefited from the 1995 financial meltdown with the same players, you cross Kerry and Paul Cheng, Cheng Young and Associates, choose not to intervene and why people why because Anisha was the minister of finance and would have understood all the bad practices of FSL and still did not stop them and bigger yet Andrew Wallace as a prime minister have an account in SSL knowing that SSL is a pyramid scheme let us rule on, read on Bolt, who retired in 2017, has been doing business with SSL for 10 years. As one of the clients with the biggest portfolios, Bolt may not have known that in November 2016, people hear this about going on now, the FSC had served a notice of intention on SSL that its license would be suspended for a litany of failures. People more want to see with me now. Panel, more want to follow me. Right? In, in November 2016, the FSC had served a notice of intention on SSL that its license would be suspended for a litany of failures. failures. No. Again, Adli Shah would have been informed about this. And again, the Prime Minister would have been informed about this. Let us move on. The FSC regulates non-deposit taking um, institutions such as insurance companies, pension funds, and brokerage firms. Along with its brokerage mandate, SSL says it provides investment advisory services on private wealth management 
and financial planning services with an emphasis on U.S. dollars exposure. According to the FSC document, the regulators could not confirm whether many of those activities were being carried out properly and in accordance with the law. Part of the FSC opinion was built on an on-site examination of SSL between June 6 now and September 14, 2016, which would be, you know what? What it revealed, people? Several violations. Let me read over the people. Part of the FSC's opinion was built on an on-site examination of SSL between what? June 6 and September 14, 2016. Which do what? Reveal what? Several violations. No. Among the, among the allegations were unsafe and unsound practices. Offering unregistered securities and incomplete requests for a proposal highlighted by seven of 30 client agreement funds inspected, which did not indicate risk appetite of the client. Regarding a report on the global assets under SSL management, the FSC examiners found there were overstatement of funds reported to the FSC on the other paper inconsistencies in amounts reported for some assets instances we, um, where assets reported and broker statements were not found on internal SSL records when you hear that paper no you are going to tell me you know people let us talk let us reason right Adlisha FSC would have given Adlisha such report only Shaw would have spoken to the Prime Minister of such report. Prime Minister Andrew Wallace must, I am not asking him, must be in awareness of this, but yet still leave his account in the air. People, we are going on, we are going on. FSC staff were also unable to confirm the value of funds in Clans Bank's account as at April 30, 2016 due to inconsistency between SSL internal records and reconciliation document provided by the bank. So people, what you have? SSL record, they show one thing, and the bank reconciliation do and document are showing another thing. This information would also right, be um, the, 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 the finance minister, Adli Shah, would privy of this. And the Prime Minister would have prevented this Bangaranga's related to the conspiracy of corruption. On a look, people, not all funds with the clients opening SSL accounts indicated source of funds. Regulators also said they observed that SSL was engaged in a loan business contrary to law. Look, we stop writers of people. Now, let us read. Let us read this again. Not all funds. With clients opening SSL accounts indicated source of funds. Regulators also said they observed that SSL was engaged in a loan business contrary to law. Let me ask. Let me ask. So we have seen in 1995 is it the thing that FinSAC utilized unsecured loans that caused the 1995 um financial disaster no we are because ssl not supposed to be giving loans in. you understand because of what happened in 1995 this is the reason why people let me make you know let me let, let me uh make you know aware as a result of the 1995 financial meltdown this was the reason why fsc was created you understand to manage non-banking um, sector like SSL. And one of the rules, the primary rules, is that they, they are not supposed to give out loans. They are not supposed to give out loans. What's this for people? Right? Andrew Wallace, whatever we are of that. Right? Family shop, whatever we are of we have that. If you know, you can talk about it, you can get it. Not about Nigel Clark yet. Not about Adlisha. Adlisha 
would have aware of this and know very well that SFL engage right in giving out loans, right, is contrary to the MST rules and should have closed them down. Should have closed them down as it relates to the consistent behavior of impropriety. However, no, neither Andrew shall make any effort to close them down, neither Andrew Owners make any effort, you understand, to take out his account. Remember now what we are talking about, right? We are talking about April 30, 2016. Remember, said the Prime Minister giant SSL in 2008. And we would have gotten all of these reports, you understand, and can make a determination that, look here, this is bad. Me, as a Prime Minister, I am not going to involve with this. This is clear corruption. You understand? I, as a Prime Minister, have to have integrity. You understand? Should not be participating in something like this. The Prime Minister did not make that decision. The Prime Minister, knowingly, and I'm going to say knowingly because the evidence is here, knowingly know that SSL, you understand, was breaking the rules and regulation and the Prime Minister in collaboration with SSL to break the rules and regulation along with, uh, along with um, Adli Shah. Let us start. There was no segregation of global bonds. And before that, again, let me, start, let me say this. Let me read back this over again to show you what the Prime Minister had done recently as it relates to the Integrity Commission report. Not all farms with clients opening SSL accounts indicated source of funds. Regulator also said the observer, they observed that SSL was engaging in a loan business. People, me, me and Ratigan just read out a while ago with Beryl. You, know? you understand? We had Beryl had given the Prime Minister $50 million dollars Berita, not Beryl, sorry, sorry, people. Berita, 50 million unsecured loan. The Prime Minister should have known that those, that sort of entity that lies under the non banking sector, right, is not allowed to give unsecured loans or loans. And now we see that the Prime Minister processing a loan from Berita. This is clear criminality. So when we see the Parliament trying to protect Andrew Holness, why are they protecting Andrew Holness? Because all of them corrupt. All of them corrupt. There was no segregation of global bonds being held. For the brokerage clients and SSL internal records did not show that the securities were being held in segregation. Statement SSL sent to clients were deficient as they did not clearly indicate which securities were being held in safekeeping. Noted the document, which added that several concerns arose as it pertains to the internal control environment which may be due to inadequate oversight or due regard to required internal procedures and controls. Mm -hmm. Now, let me talk, let me ask about this paragraph. Let me ask you, Andrew Owners, right? You, Andrew Owners, and um, Adli Shah, let me ask a question right now. Now, you claim that, as it relates to FSC, putting, putting, um, SSL and watch, right, as it relates to, right, process in avoiding, right, um, the suspension of um, SSL license. Now, let me ask the question here. What was the following up as it relates to correcting SSL behavior, right, as it relates to the misappropriation of client funds? You plug them from 2016. Where is the following up? You are going to tell me Adli Shah, right? And the FSC um, management did not follow up, did not make any follow up. Now, let me ask some questions. 
What happened to SSL internal audit system? Because SSL has been robbing the clients from way back as in 2010. So then how does it work? Did the internal audit system flag that there is some wrongdoing, there is some added questions? No. Let me ask a question. What happened to all the audits as it relates to the internal system that SSL would have performed? So then are you saying to me that SSL missed all of this? Right? And so also, SSC did not follow up, but allow SSL to continue knowing to the fact, knowing to the fact, Jamaican people, that you cross carry, you cross carry had caught up in the 1995 financial meltdown. You cross carry who caught up in the 1995 financial meltdown was left alone, left alone to create mayhem on the Jamaican people a second time around. You tell me, people, with the Prime Minister this time, has a portfolio account in SSL. And where we are seeing SDB Bank opening zero dollar account, opening account with zero dollar, and money coming from SSL into the account. You are going to tell me that there is no, this is not a conspiracy between Andrew Holness, you cross carry, Ardley Shaw, Nigel Shaw. You are going to tell me this is clear conspiracy to rise back SSL, for SSL to commit what SSL had committed. Let us move on. Securities refers to tradable financial instru instrument used to raise capital in the public and private markets after long-awaited audited statement for the financial year ending June 30, 2016, were presented in January 2017. Auditors KPMG said it did not get enough information to assess the 135 million SSL declared as fees it earned from managing clients' portfolios and that deficit of 1.5 billion and other issues indicate material uncertainty and may cause significant doubt about the company's ability to continue as going concern. Now, let us talk about all of this. And in spite of all of this, that FSC would have collected this report, right? FSC now would have sent down this report to Adli Shah. Adli Shah now would have communicated to Andrew Wallace. And you are going to tell me, you are going to tell me that Andrew Wallace, in spite of knowing all of this, knowing that SSL is robbing people, Andrew Wallace still allow himself to be a part of these people. To be a part of this and now you see in parliament they want to burn down the integrity commission because the integrity commission investigators are doing job people who open your eye open your eye and look now let us read on following the february 17 2017 meeting between the ssl representative and the fsc the regulator wrote to ssl 11 years now later outlining the seven conditions to be satisfied to avoid a suspicion on the years people three things were due by march 17 2017 tonight evidence on completeness existence and accuracy of the net margins from foreign currency trades by dollar financial service amounting to 12.5 million dollars as indicated in ssl audited financial statement Evidence of the management fees earned by the SSL for the year ended June 30, 2016. And evidence of the repayment, repayment of a 7.5 loan provided to related party. I am asking you a question, uh, a question now, FSC. What is followed up on for all these requests that you made? 
did you follow up on it for the correction to be done and to ensure that SSL come true with all that you have given them? No, you haven't. You haven't. So, Alisha, you know of this. The Prime Minister, you know of this. SSL was given until May 30, 2017 to provide the FSC with evidence that it rectified a shortfall between assets not accounted for an SSL balance sheet and its liabilities. Now, let me stop right here. Assets not accounted for. This now explains that SSL is doing the very same thing what Paul Cheng Young and Associates had done. Taking clients' money and the probability exists where they are buying up properties and hiding them. Same behavior of things up. But the question is, why did they, why was SSL allowed to repeat FinSAC 2.0? Why the reason SSL was allowed to execute FinSAC 2.0 and even today as we speak, you cross carry cannot be questioned, Jamaican people. Open your eyes. SSL was also ordered to immediately cease accepting new client funds or additional funds from existing clients unless it had sufficient assets to cover the corresponding, corresponding liabilities. While all financial reports within applicable time frames and immediately refrain from granting loans to related parties on the year that people, this is one of the items that caused the 1995 financial meltdown. And here, Andrew Holness, Adley Shaw, and Nigel Clark, they are ensuring that SSL execute FinSAC 2.0 and we ask the question why the letter was signed by Lawrence Crossley the senior director for securities and at FSC said SSL signing of the terms would su supersede directions issued October 22 2013 after SSL sold its repo business to JN fund managers that July, if SSL fails to provide an undertaking to carry out the agreed corrective actions and comply with its terms by Friday, August 25, 2017, the FSC will take necessary steps to suspend SSL security dealers license. Cross Kerry said, no, Mr. Cross Kerry, let me ask you, the FSC did not carry out that because you were allowed to continue up until 2021. You were allowed to carry, to carry on until 2021. And in 2021, the Prime Minister take out, take it out in account. My Jamaican people, this is cruelty, conspiracy, wickedness against the Jamaican people, and your wholeness. And I'm not going to hesitate. I'm not going to back down. And your wholeness. Right, you cross carry, Adlishaw, Nigel Clark, guilty, guilty, guilty. If FSL fails to provide an undertaking to carry out a free corrective action and comply with its terms by Friday, August 25, 2017, the FSC will take necessary steps to suspend SSL security dealers license. Well, guess what, people, Jamaican people, we all know that this did not happen. This was not done. SSL was allowed. Was allowed by the FSC directors and managers. Allowed by Adli Shah, who is the finance minister. Allowed by Andrew Wallace. Would have, would have been aware of all the wrongdoings, misappropriation of clients' money, 
they all fit in silence of the conspiracy to arm the Jamaican people. What happened next is not clear, as the FSC typically does not publish its directions issued to companies. It was forced to do so on January 12, 2023. However, after the massive fraud was reported, an FSC official said, question submitted late Monday on what happened after the February 2017 directions were not likely to be answered by press time. SSL Chairman Jeffrey Cohen has directed queries to the FSC, citing the regulator's announced oversights now in effect. A wealth advisor who was fired last week is yet to be questioned in the matter of being investigated by the police fraud squad, the Financial Investigation Division, and the FSC. Now, when you look at the wealth advisor, Gene and Pantan, we know that Gene and Pantan cannot move $4 billion to our bank system. We have seen where Gene and Pantan said, okay, my statement that I first drafted was a lie. I was coerced by you, Crosscarry. People, I want you to listen to me tonight. Gene and Pantan told the police that she was forced right to say what she said she was coerced by you cross carry now my jamaica people i want to ask you a question why as we speak tonight with rotigan on the panel and maria on the panel on the panel why you cross carry has not been taken into custody now let me ask andrew Wallace and let me ask nigel clark Who's about to jump ship because Bangaram out to broke loose? What efforts are you making in giving back investors their money? Now we have seen that you cross carry being relaxed and laughing because you cross carry know that the government cannot put him up in front because the government involved as it relates to hook, line, and sinker. The government has full participation in SSL. But an investigator said the complexity of the, C of the scheme included the bypassing of controls through forgery. I want people to listen to this. Manipulation of SSL IT systems and email addresses and interception of disbursement for accounts in commercial banks. The FSC announced on Monday that it has appointed a special auditor for Stocks and Security Limited. SSL was renamed from Paul Chen Young and Company in 2006 to execute the mayhem as it is today. Let us take that away and go to our panel. Now, panel, let me start with Ratigan again, the legal mind and who right would have summed up all of what we have read. Now, Ratigan, you just heard what you have heard. Right? And let me just create the background for you. As it relates to the Prime Minister awareness from way back into 2010. Right? What would be the reason for the Prime Minister knowing all what he has known and still yet have his account in SSM? and close that account in 2021. What would be that reason, Ratigan? See if you can um, help us. I mean, <clears throat> you make a very compelling case concerning knowledge that, look, um, the FSC 
uh, did an audit of, of, of SSL. And it would have reported its findings to the Minister of Finance on the show. And the Minister of Finance would report what's going on to the Prime Minister. Plus, the Prime Minister had an account at this place. And I am sure that 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 people were aware of it. It wasn't, I, I, I think, I, I, I would think he had it in his own name. I don't think he had it in, a, in, a, in somebody else's name. So they would have known that the Prime Minister has an account here. And for the Prime Minister to allow it to continue, um, not only the Prime Minister, but like he said, the Minister of Finance, it's 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 puzzling, and it can only lead to one. It can only lead to one conclusion that it was there were uh, there were nefarious activities here because you start to think, well, how could this happen? Unless now, you know, other shots gonna come and say, I didn't tell the prime minister what was going on. It's gonna be hard for him to say he didn't know. But you know what? Keep in mind that Minister Clark said the same thing. You know. He said he didn't know. He never get the letter about SSL either. <laughs> Remember him say that. And him said, and, and 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 the gentleman who sent the letter used to work at the Minister of Finance for with 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 with, with, with uh, Minister Clark. And so he knows him fairly well. And what the gentleman did, he said, I'm sending this to you by email and by courier. And then all of a sudden. The minister, Minister Clark said he didn't know anything about this SSL debacle. He didn't know anything about it. Even though it was hand delivered and it was emailed to him. And remember what he said? He said, Oh, you know, the staff, the you know, um, he, he doesn't he didn't remember getting it. And then eventually he said it took like a week and a half, something like that, and he went through some drawers and he found it. No. Do you believe that story? And I'm just being <laughs> You don't have to answer that because I, I know what the answer is going to be based on your presentation. Do you believe any of that story? Not just the one with Minister Clark, but do you believe anything that 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 the former Minister of Finance and the Prime Minister would tell you about SSL? No, but here's what happened. To make it a small country, no matter how we think, and, and, and we admit it because we say we're little. You know, we tell our what, but we're little. It's a small country. And when you start moving that circle, it's even smaller, right? That's the circle that Jeffrey Tavares would call the boom, blah, blah, boom, blah, blah, right? Very small circle. Everybody knows, you know, that circle. Everybody knows what's going on. And so for, 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 uh, for, um, for the person in charge of all of this to make the argument that I didn't know what was going on, then the question is, well, why were you even there? Because that was part of your function, to know what's going on. Because FSC reports directly to the finance minister. About yeah. All of, yeah, about all of the stuff going on in the financial industry. Right? And it's important the finance minister must know these things. Because you're talking about things that could impact the stability of the economy and all of that. Exactly. Right? So then, Yeah, so they so the must know... You know, the, 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 it's it's one of his primary jobs is to is to understand and gauge the temperature of the financial industry in Jamaica. Not only rule for a very short stint, because in 2007 it was Bruce Golden, right, who um who um took over, right, and I think that Bruce Golden. Uh, between 2007 uh, to 2011, I think it is 2011 that Bruce Golden um, meet um, his situation. And yeah, the time at meeting with, with the Secretary of State and he was kicked out of office and then Andrew was to, Andrew took over for that short period of time, okay. um, was Prime Minister and then Portia won her mandate and that was 2012 until 2011. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We clear up the dates now, yeah. Exactly. So, Pusha Simpson went in now 2012. We have Pusha Simpson now, right? Administration flagged um, SSL, right? Flagged SSL for the impropriety um, um, behavior, right? And not only that, they were flagged by um, Pusha Simpson in 2000, 
in 2012. They also again flagged in 2016, right? Um, for um, their behavior. So I'm saying, look at this. Look at the difference here. Look at the difference here, Jamaica. Right? Um, the, the finance minister, right, between 2012 and 2016 would be Omar Davis. Right? Am I correct? Um, people just make up my memory. Right? Between 2012 and Omar Davis. Right? So, so then Omar Davis would have gotten um, the report, right, passed it on to Portia, right, and Portia would have done, you understand what is expected in terms of the People's National Party government, flagged them in 2012. Now, again in 2016, now when you look now under Andrew Olness administration, right, it would be the same protocol utilize under uh, Andrew Owners led government where you understand the FSC would have communicated to the financial um to, um to the finance the finance minister and the finance minister would have communicated to the prime minister uh, uh, um, just like what okay so I got to understand that it was Peter Phillips who was um the minister of finance between and 2000 between 2012 to 2016. to 2016, Peter Phillips. Let's correct that because we want to make sure that we are passing. Yes, yes I was just, I was looking at it here. Yes, right. Um, Peter Phillips. Omar Davis was Minister of Works, Transport, Works, and House, yes. 2012 to 2016. Yes, yes, and he was Minister of Finance, um, 1993 to 2007. So right in the middle of that crisis. Yes. Because we are because we are replicating from memory, people will understand that sometimes we forget things. So let us let us let us correct um, that data now. So Peter Phillips, you understand as it relates to um, Peter Phillips in the space between 2012 to 2016, right? The FSC would have now communicated to Peter Phillips, and Peter Phillips would have communicated to Portia, and so then Portia now would have put them on notice. Um, on two occasions, 2012 and 2016, I am saying the same standard operating procedure, same SOP, would have applied as it relates to the Jamaica Labour Party administration, where the FSC now would have reported to the Minister of Finance, and the Minister of Finance now would have reported to um, Andrew Owens. So then the difference is now Andrew Owens now have his account in it from 2008. Would have aware of all the wrongdoings. It's, it's unbelievable. Yeah, but stick up here, but, but Mystic, let, let's give a background to to all of this in terms of Peter Phillips as a finance minister, Portia Simpson as a prime minister, and flagging SSL. Remember now, this is was in the height of the crisis when they were negotiating with the IMF after Bruce Golden had, you know destroy the economy, not paying the bills, and they were now negotiating for an IMF deal to help to shore up the country's economy. So within all of that, they would now be getting a full picture of the financial sector, who is doing what and who is not doing what. Exactly. So you can understand now why then Finance Minister Peter Phillips and Portia Simpson as Prime Minister would be issuing all these um ultimatums through the fsc to ssl to say you need to bring your uh, your, your books and you, you need to be compliant you need to do all of these things because they were seeing it in real time because everything hinged on them what was important for them at the time was to secure this deal with the imf yes. and in order to do it they have to have a look at everything that was happening in the country at the time, including the financials, the health of the financial sector, because you'll remember now it wasn't the toilet, the economy was in the toilet. Let's not forget that. So all of that was happening at that time. Right. It, you know, it is a, it is a it is a crime scheme um, as it relates to you know what transpired with SSL. Uh, put up back um Gary um to um thing there, right? Yeah, the first one, the first one, first one, four billion. 
that is not the first one. It's a continuation of that statement. Okay. Can you put up this one? It's a continuation of who? Victims of the alleged fraud that took place at Stocks and Security Limited, SSL, are likely to see next to no recovery of their money, according to a recently filed trustee report. Now, Maria, as it relates to Nigel Clark, um, one of Nigel Clark accounts in Parliament, right? Remember that Nigel Clark stated in Parliament that um, they begin the process of giving back some money to um some of the investors so all of that all of that that Langer Clark reported is a lie because here it is yeah all of that that Langer Clark um, um had spoken in parliament is a lie as it relates to um you know money being given back to some of the um the investors because here it is estimated four billion in losses for under 300 clients' accounts, investment house is currently bankrupt and being wound up, uh, wound up under the supervision of court confirmed trustee. So all of that was that. And here's the thing. Remember, remember, this is the same minister who said that the FBI will is 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 literally on the island and will be taking over the the case. Nothing that what nothing could be further was further from the truth. And another thing is. He said 70% of the SSL victims got back their money, 70%. And this report now coming out says nobody has gotten a dollar, zero dollars and zero cents. So yes. who are we to believe? So why is he going to the IMF if it's a costed lie? Think about it. Think about it. Why is he going to the IMF? Right, because right. He, he has the skill set. He's a bright man. We're not going to take that away from him, but he has made some errors that you really have to question his integrity it's because he knows better. He knows better. He All knows right. better. Mm -hmm. many and remember now, there was a budget shortfall in his last budget presentation. It was a budget shortfall. You know, and, and you have the Prime Minister saying, okay, you're going to, um, Clarkson is going to be a city and Port was going to be Little Miami and you're going to do this, this road here and that's going to happen. And they're giving out all of these billions of dollars because this is big spend on government with, least, with the least results, right? Yes. And they're giving out all these monies. Where are they getting it from? Where are they getting it from? And you have all these donations that they're getting. We don't see where these, who, you know, how these donations are, are being spent but the money evaporates to thin air. And, you know, so we can understand why the SSL situation has happened because you have a government where there's no accountability. There's no transparency. There's no good governance. And in a country where corruption is rampant, it is tragic. While you were speaking, I, I started doing some quick checks and... 2008 was when the Prime Minister opened his account with SSL, am I correct? That is correct, that is correct. All right, because you know what else we did in 2008? He established AdMat in St. Lucia. Exactly, in 2008, yeah. So where did the money come from? There you go. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. It's one of the but like, but like, oh, the, the account, the, mm -hmm. the, the uh, Imperium, um, um, Imperium, Positive Jamaica Media, and Estate Bridge Holdings, all three of them were formed in 2020. Yes. COVID. Oh, this is, this is, you see, you pack, you see the pattern and practice, though. Yes. You see the pattern and practice. Yes. SFL Admat, same year. Yes, exactly. Bridge, Imperium, Positive Media, same year. Yes. Uh, what is the thing is that there, there, there is there is an intent here to do certain things. But Rati Bako, you ask a very important question. And to all us giant SSL in 2008, and Andrew Owners also created Admat in 2008. Now mm -hmm. watch this. Remember, I said that 
in 2016. Andrew Onest gave an interview on um, um, Nationwide. The host at the time was Abka Fitzhenley. Remember what the Prime Minister said to Abka Fitzhenley in 2016, you know, on that interview, that he came into the politics, right, with $47 million. Mont, you remember this, you know? Yeah, I remember. Right? Now, look at this. Remember, look we'll back up before the Prime Minister opened Admat. Very good question to ask, not Ratty. So remember back here. Remember that before the Prime Minister opened Admat. Remember that the Prime Minister was under investigation within the period 2006 to 2009. Ratty, want to, want to watch this. Mm -hmm. Prime Minister was under investigation between the period 2006 to 2009 for what? Illegal awarding of contract. contract. To Westcon. To Westcon. Mm -hmm. So all of that money as it relates to Westcon, those contract money that goes to Westcon, what the investigators need to focus on, right, is if Westcon, as it relates to what's his name, um, Gavin, Robert, right? Robert Garvin, mm -hmm. Robert Garvin, if Robert Garvin really convert any of that money to his personal use, or Robert Garvin have a way, you understand, as it relates to political kickback. You understand giving some of that to the prime minister. Well, here's what the, the incident occurred in two between 2006 2009, but they didn't investigate him till the, the start was investigated much later when when Zara Burton brought it to light. Then they opened up the investigation, yes. But then there's something else, it, it opened their account. Oh, here's the thing the prime minister said, right, that. He closed Admat because of the pushback he got from the public, saying that it, you know it didn't look right, you know the optics of it. That's what he said. But then, when you look at the laws in Saint Lucia, the laws change in Saint Lucia. Yes, and he said you can't have a holding company here. You must have a company that's doing real business yes. and employing St. Lucians and you pay a 30% tax. That's why I'm left. That's why I'm left. But that, yeah, but that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying left because all oh, the public, the public was, well, there was a public outcry saying that him should have leave. I said, no. He he like, because the law said that you can't, and the St. Lucia changed them laws because they were concerned about money laundering and a whole bunch of things. We are just have holding companies they just said they're just like shell companies. And so they said, no, no, no. You have to be doing business, real business in St. Lucia. Otherwise, you can't you can't stay here and leave. Yes. So that's one point. The second point is, like you said, the 2008 SSL. I'm no I'm even more curious as to okay, where the money come from for open up Admat? Where, where that money come from? Yes. So, 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 so what I believe in terms of my subjective opinion, right, was to the fact that I think that money come from as it relates to the illegal awarding of contracts, right? Oh, that's what you mean. That's what I mean. Okay. You see where I'm going? Yeah. Right? Between, between, because that was... That it's was, around the same time period. Ah. Uh, mm -hmm. Same time period. And the thing mm -hmm. is, um, based on what he said, um, 2016... To Abka Fitz Henley. When we check it out, you know, um, Ratty, we know so that was a lie. Because we said he brought in $47 million into the politics. He came into the politics now, Ratty, 1997. You understand? So, so, so let us look. Um, he left university in 1994. So he then. Pay a student loan. So, and, and he couldn't pay, pay um, his student loan in 1994. So between 1995 and 1995, and he had to do a fish fry for his wedding. Exactly. 
1996, you are going to tell me that it take two years to amass 47 million dollars. You're not on what basis? What was the prime minister business between 1995 and 1996? The prime minister has no business. Wasn't he? No. He, was, he, was, he was a director for a not for profit, and then he went on to be Edward Siaga's um right. some so for those Edward Siaga. How much money he making those two years? It took them all to 47 million, 47 million. Exactly. So, 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 so the only logical thing to think is to say, okay, all right, based on the money that he get as it relates to him influencing those contracts, you understand? That is how he was now trying to clean those money. You understand? Because those money now would have gone into Admat. You understand? Remember now, you know, it is Admat, you understand, that he used to buy, you understand, his first Roughly about three or four initial properties, didn't it? Yeah, the Beverly Hills, the Shen Stone, the other one, the, yeah. Uh, so, so mm. there you go, as it relates to, you know, him, 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 him trying to know, you understand, wash the money, wash the corruption money, right? Um, into Admat, and use now Admat, you understand, to purchase these properties. So that's why you find it said, Fred, the problem still exists. Because the Prime Minister cannot explain that 47 million dollar in under no circumstances. The Prime Minister can explain that 47 million dollars. Because number one, Fid, well, you know what? Because Fid now, Fid is not. You, some people have made the argument that, well, and oh, the Prime Minister made the argument that, well, you can't really combine um, the statutory declarations, you know, investigating, you know, you're supposed to do it. His argument is you're supposed to do it one year at a time. That I think essentially that's what he's saying. Yeah. So it must say you can't really go back and you can't really go. You have to just deal with one at a time. But with Fed now, Fed now, Fed, Fed now restricted. And exactly. there's no restriction either. There's no restriction by the by the Integrity Commission. But Fed definitely not have any restriction. Fed can go all the way back. And what I must remember is that there is no statutory limitations for corruption in Jamaica. Exactly. The only thing we see them, we see them is that the prosecutor probably ever said abuse of process, abuse of process. a long time ago, and you know, no, not come out, not you know, not drum up this thing. I think, but fit, look, here's the thing them can them can bring an action outside of Jamaica because I'm sure that some of that admat money touched the US banking system. Yes. I'm sure going in or coming out, it touched yes. the US banking system. I'm almost sure it touched banking. So they can bring stuff up, they can bring charge, well, they can investigate him outside of Jamaica. And they should. And that is why Fed now should get up and talk to the Eggman group and say, we could go back and do a complete investigation. Who we'll want to make sure that our prime minister is clean as a whistle? So who we'll want to go back to when him start out, which is not difficult. 